per 0 cell this T cell now needs to go to the to the lymph node and for that it has to offer certain things to go and attach there. Now before we talk about those proteins just know this thing that there are two types of lymph nodes. Lymph nodes which are actually in the form of the lymph and are attached to the lymphatic channels and are present all around the body and then there are Peyer's patches which are present in the gut. Peyer's patches are about 30 to 34 small 3-4 centimeter nodules, lymphatic nodules present in the ileum. So these are also you can treat them as lymph nodes too. So the lymph node and the Peyer's patches, so I'm going to just create a Peyer's patch. So this is a P-E-Y-E-R Peyer's patch and this is a regular lymph node. These lymph nodes, the, the cells present in the lymph node and Peyer's patches, they also express certain proteins which would then allow these T cells to stick to them. So the first thing to note, very, very important thing, the veins, venules in these cells, these venules are usually called HEV, high endothelial venules. These are usually called HEV, what that means is that these are high endothelial venues. Now what do, why are these called high endothelial venues? Because these have venular cells are cuboidal and tall as compared to other venues where the cells are squamous and short. These are cuboidal cells and these are tall cells. These venular cells, these high endothelial, these are called high because the cell height is more. The cells are tall, these are high, that is why these are called high endothelial venules. These high endothelial venules are the route of these naive T cells to go inside the lymph nodes or inside the Peyer's patches. So these T cells, when they reach here in the lumen of these venules, so let's say this T cell is present here in the lumen these high endothelial venular cells, these cells, they express certain adhesion molecules which will pick up a naive T cell and suck it into the lymph node. So what are these ones? So now first of all, we know that this naive T cell has number one, Sialyl, Sialyl Lewis. Lewis X modified X modified protein that is one ligand present on the surface of a T cell. This ligand can interact with the so if I make if I make over here so let's say if I make a cell here this is the high endothelial venular cell in the lymph node. This is going to be interacting with the P or L, P or P or E selectin. What is that? That is a ligand for this. So this is the ligand. So this thing would connect here. So that is one adhesion. The other adhesion, so remember P and E selectin would mean what platelet and endothelial selectin. So these are selectin molecules, these are ligand molecules, these are cell adhesion molecules which are expressed on the platelets and or on the endothelium. On the other hand, the Sialyl X modified protein is sort of a selectin present on the, on the T cell. The other thing which is present on the T cell are called L selectins and I hope that once again you, you know that L for lymphocyte, so L selectins are selectins which are present on the lymphocyte. Remember the difference between selectin and integrin, selectins are monomeric, so selectins have one, one protein, so let us say this is a cell, let us say it is T cell and let us say this is another cell, endothelial cell, the selectins usually are monomeric. On the other hand plus their bond is weak, on the other hand integrins are dimeric that means they have two parts to them and when these two connect when the integrins connect that is a stronger bond. 
So, normally integrins are used to stop the cell at that place while selectines are used for rolling and slowing down. So, just remember selectines are weaker bond making proteins these are monomeric proteins integrins are these red ones are integrin integrins are stronger bond making proteins and these are dimeric. So, going back here the L selectine would also connect to the high endothelial. So, if I say this is H E V cell high endothelial venular cell. So, the L selectines now connect with some adhesion molecules here which are glycam, glycam 1 I should probably use a different color glycam 1 and then if it is a Peyer's patches then these are called mad cam 1 and I will explain the names in a second. There is another thing which is here another adhesion ligand which is called CD 34 and then we can have the um, uh, what is that we can also have the uh, it is coming back to me ICAM 1 we can also have ICAM 1. So, these are the adhesion molecules which are showing on the high endothelial venules. So, now L selectin connects with the glycam 1 glycam the name is coming from two pieces glycosylated dependent cell adhesion molecule that is why it is called glycam 1 and then uh, over here madcam 1 mucosal adhesion cell adhesion molecule. So, it is a uh, ligand which is which is showing up on the cell of a of a pious patch uh, high endothelial venue. So, now this L selectin can connect with the with glycam it can connect with CD 34 or it can connect with the MADCAM. Now, keep an eye very very important these T cells also express LPAM. So, let us say this is this LPAM 1 lymphocyte pyre patch adhesion molecule this cell PAM only connect to the cells in the Peyer's patches. So, what do we have? We have Sialy Lewis X modified protein that would be connecting to the cell on the uh, on the high endothelial venule H P and E selectins. Then we have L selectin on the lymphocyte that can connect to glycam 1 CD 34. Then we have L PAM 1 lymphocyte Peyer's patches adhesion molecule which connects with the MADCAM1 mucosal adhesion cell adhesion molecule which is a molecule present or a ligand present on the high endothelial venule of a Peyer's patch. So, look at this this T cell is not going to go anywhere else why not it is actually going it is going through the whole body it is circulating throughout the body it is not going to stick anywhere why because the ligands which it connects to now are only present in the in the lymph nodes or pious patches. There is one more thing this cell the high endothelial venular cell it secretes it secretes CCL 21 it secretes the CCL 21 which is again a chemokine and of course, the lymph node has a corresponding receptor called CCR 9. So, once this cell once the T cell reaches near the high endothelial venular cell and this venular cell is secreting CCL 21 that would cause the CCR 9 receptor to become activated. Will this happen anywhere else? No, this is only going to happen in the high endothelial venule of a lymph node or pulse patch as soon as happen now pay attention to this this is very important as soon as this chemical interaction occurs the the naive T cell would cause its integrines which is LFA 1 to connect with ICAM 1 which is also an integrin. 
this is a very important thing do